11. Everybody get settled down now. Hebrews chapter 11. I've often wondered what our generation of Christians would do if we was faced with some of the things the early Christians were faced with. I've often wondered that. I'd, I'd kind of... Help me out, fellas. I've kind of wondered lots of times what we would do if uh, if we had to face what people had to face years ago. Our line of thinking in America today is, hey, I'm doing the church a favor if I come. And you better not say nothing smart to me either. I won't come back. That's where a lot of Christians, their attitude is. And they're not willing to put up with anything. They're not willing, willing to suffer persecution or anything. The average Christian nowadays looks at God as a way to uh, be healthy and prosper and get the best of both worlds and say, hey, I ain't going to change my lifestyle, but I'll take heaven if you'll give it to me. And uh, if I won't have persecution, you can forget that. Like a Sunday school teacher was teaching one Sunday morning, and the Sunday school teacher was describing uh, Goliath, the giant Goliath to these little boys. The boys, she had done a tremendous job. Goliath was uh, all those nine cubics high, and it depends on your definition of a cubit. A cubit can be anything from 18 inches to on up to maybe nearly 40 inches. They give it different definitions and lengths. Uh, Goliath could have been as much as 13 feet tall. That's a whopper, you know. Son, he could take on a new bone and pat him on the head like this. You know. I mean, he'd look at old uh, uh, Charles Buckley, little bitty boy here, get out of the way. 13 feet tall, Goliath. And the teacher was telling the kids, said, now, um, well, I'll tell you what, this was scary. This big man, he had more armor on him than you could even carry. And she she had them all scared. She said, wouldn't it be scary to face a giant like that? And David called on the power of God. You know, and the power of God filled David. And in the name of the Lord, he faced him with a little sling and all this kind of stuff. And she said, now boys, what would you do if you met Goliath? And their eyes was about that big around. She said, Sonny, what would you do? He said, I'd call 911. <laughs> that's, that's probably what I'd do. <laughs> Instead of a slingshot, we'd have mace. We're going to get him. <laughs> Way up in his eye. <laughs> Something. You know, our generation of Christianity is so different from the brand of Christianity they had back in the old days. We're so far removed from the Bible type of Christianity nowadays, it's, sometimes I wonder about us. I'm, uh, but I want to talk to you about this morning who you're going to live with in heaven. You ever wondered who your neighbor might wind up being in heaven? Down here, you know, you're interested in who your neighbors are, ain't you? Everybody wants good neighbors. I've heard people say, boy, I'll tell you one thing, I can't get no, a bunch of my people moved in over here, I can't sleep, you know, we have to start locking the doors and everything since it's bunch moved. I'm interested in who my neighbors are. And and I'm, I know you are. I want to know who I'm going to be living with when I get to heaven. I'm going to heaven pretty soon. And you are too if you're saved. If you're saved, you're going to heaven pretty soon. We might go today, people. I'm interested in who my neighbors are going to be in heaven. Who are we going to live with in heaven? In Hebrews 11, it gives me the thought that I want to use this morning. And uh, it said, these people in verse 35 and verse 34 said they quenched the violence of fire. Look at it, Hebrews 11, 34. Said they escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Waxed variant and fight. Does that sound... Many like many Christians you know today turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. And others were tortured. Were tortured. Not accepting deliverance. 
that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others, these are the people you're going to live with in heaven. And others have trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. They cut them in two. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Now look at here at verse 40. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. We're going to live with them people. They're not, they're, everything ain't going to be right for them until we get there. They're, these are the people that we're going to actually live with in heaven. I heard a story this week, and I'm sure you're familiar with this story. It's been in the news, newspapers, on TV and everything for several months about this fellow who was working in the, I don't know what state it was in. You, you, some of you might know. I think I heard it, but I wasn't paying attention. Who was working out in the woods with a chainsaw and cut a tree down. And uh, the bulldozer, I believe he was working. Anyway, this tree fell on him and pinned him uh, to that he couldn't move. Great big tree, this big ram, was laying across him. He hollered and screamed there for help for a little while. Nobody never did come and help him. He knew he was going to die if he didn't do something. And this guy took his pocket knife. This just happened back in July. Took his pocket knife and cut his leg off to get out from under that tree. How many of you heard about that on the news? Everybody hear that? Now, people say, oh, isn't that there? Think about that for a minute. You think about that for a second. You say, well, preacher, I could have never done that. You know what that fella done? He took a pocket knife and cut, cut down through his flesh. I don't know how he got the bone in two. Just whittled it in two, I reckon. I mean, you talk about hurt, man. That guy did it. And you know what? I saw on the news the other day that this is October, he is back at work. They have made that fella a, an artificial egg. He's famous. I mean, they probably won't write books about it and make a movie and everything. They made him an artificial egg with an artificial foot. He is back driving a bulldozer. Man, when I seen that, I thought, glory to God, give me half of what that fella's got, Lord. I'd like to have a church full of men like that, wouldn't you? My soul. Somebody shuts a door in our face and we're ready to quit. You say, well, Brother Danny, they make fun of me at work. This guy cut his leg off, people. And they put a fake leg on him and he's back driving the dozer and he had just the best spirits. They said, are you enjoying back work? He said, oh, yes. I'm here. He said, well, practice and I'll be right back where I was. I thought, my soul, he's got more than most Christians that I know of. But if we had Sunday school teachers like that, we would never have to worry about nobody quit. If we had preachers like that, we'd be dangerous. Well, I mean, with that kind of an attitude of, hey, no matter what happens to me, I'm going to go on, I'm going to serve God, no matter how bad it gets. To these days, if one thing happens, we say, but Lord... This is not fair. You're not treating me good. I'll tell you what, preacher, I quit serving God because I went to church three Sundays and nobody smiled at me. Bless it's with a heart. It pitiful. It pitiful. Nobody smiled at it. Listen, buddy, this fella cut his leg off, folks. And he come back to work. He's back to work right now. Well, that done something to me. I don't know if the guy's a Christian or not, but that done something to me. I began to uh, study church history and I studied a little bit of church history and I'm going to tell you about some people that you're going to be living with. You're going to be living with these people. There's a fellow many, many years ago by the name of Ignatius. And uh, this man was the bishop of Antioch. And these are your kinfolks, your brothers and sisters in the Lord. They took him to the Colosseum in Rome and were going to feed him to the lions because he wouldn't renounce his faith. And they took him in there and they said, we're going to open up these cages. These lions are going to get you. That'd be a terrible way to go. And uh, they, he, they took him down, down to the Colosseum. And he, they said, you want to denounce the Lord? No, don't want to denounce the Lord. As they was going down there and taking him down to the lions and to the Colosseum, 
He said, I hope my bones will be fine bread to the lions for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he went over there to that gate where those lions were in there and he goes up to the bars and shakes his fist and says, come out of there. Man, there's a guy with some religion, folk people. And they tore him the shreds and he went on home to the heaven waiting on me and you to get there and live with him. A few years later, there's a fellow in early church history named Polycarp. And Polycarp, at 80 years old, they took him and burned him at the stake. Many of those Christians, thousands of them in those days, they took them and burned them at a stake for their, for their, for their Christianity. These days, if somebody writes at us, we don't want to read the Bible no more. They burn these people. They take them and put them at the stake. They put a st- bunch of stuff like this right here, a bunch of dry hay and stuff down around the bottom, put corn stalks around it. Then they'd stack wood and sticks around there. They'd take chains. They couldn't tie them with ropes. The ropes would burn off. They'd take chains. And they'd chain these Christians to the stake. And many times the wood would be green and they'd burn them, set it on fire, and they'd just burn around their feet, you know, just burn them real bl- uh, dark red, and the fire would go out because the, cause the uh, wood was green, and they'd have to throw some tile on it and stuff and get it started, and start it two or three times and torture them before they ever burned them up. And they'd burn these Christians, let them flames just start licking up their legs, where the, where the fluid would finally b- uh, ooze out of their bodies. And that Nero, the Roman emperor, would light up his garden with these Christians. You say, why ain't I never heard that? Because they don't teach church history in school. And the reason they won't teach church history at the high school or any other school in, in the country is because church history testifies to the fact that the Roman Catholic Church put thousands of Christians to death. And that won't be tolerated in school, so you're not going to get what I'm telling you in school. But it is historical facts. The, the tendency now is, is to leave God out of teaching history, and it's impossible to do. They burned Polycarp at the stake. His blood started running out, so Christ, it, it put the fire out. And they couldn't burn him, so they wound up killing him with a sword. They asked him, will he deny the Lord? They said, oh man, will you deny it? If you'll just deny your faith, we'll take you down from here. Will you accept the Pope? Will you believe in the Mass? Whatever. He said this, 60 years my Lord has been with me. 60 years he's never done me wrong. And shall I deny him now? I'll not do it. And they burned him to death. You're going to see that man when you get to heaven. And look at a man who let him burn him at the stake so that you won't want a bumper sticker on your car because you're afraid somebody might make fun of you. This guy was burned to death because of his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christensen, a 60-year-old man, they took him out and walked him up and down with armed guards till he finally fell on his face and died. They called him Golden Mouth. He had won thousands of people to Jesus Christ and, and his ministry. They took, they took girls out there. They'd take girls out there and, and tie her to a bull, young Christian girls. Tie her to a bull and let the bull drag her until they drug the life out of her. They'd take them and put them in bags and sacks with rattlesnakes and sew them up in those bags with those snakes and throw them in the river. They'd soak them with pitch and tar and light them up just like a torch to light up the emperor's garden. This is your family. These are the people that you're going to stay in heaven with. These are the, it kind of makes you want to get a little bit more dedicated to God. So, I mean, we can at least say we suffered a little bit. They lived, they, uh, they lived in great big gray buildings that was cold, almost like cave people, had fireplaces. They'd bring in a, a whole deer, slap it down on the table. Roast that thing, barbecue it. That was their mouth. They'd take them and put gunpowder and blow their heads off. St. Patrick, who was not a Catholic, by the way, they made him a saint after he died to try to claim his his homeland. 
Sunk was a man who would go out in the jungle and he'd stand up on a, a big a stump or something and he'd start beating the drum. And when enough natives would get her, he'd preach hellfire and damnation to them. That old boy preached in those jungles for all those years, finally lost his wife, had many come birds, went home to glory. He's there in heaven this morning waiting on me and you to get there so we can give our testimony. Uh, no hope in the Pope. It's a waste of time praying to Mary. Jesus Christ he is the only way. And they lost their lives for it. Women were made to watch pigs eat their kids in a pig pen. They'd take their little boys and girls, little babies, and put them in a pigsty and let the women watch them. Many women were given a sword and were ordered to kill their own husbands. John Huss was burned at the stake. After he was promised a safe trip where he was going, they caught him and burned him at the stake. John Huss told the Pope, he said, I thought you promised me a safe trip and guaranteed my safety. And the Pope said, no Pope or Catholic has to keep his word when promising to a heretic. These guys stripped them in the winter. They were taken out in the winter time and stripped completely naked. They put bailing wire around their feet Make it in a figure eight and hang them up by their feet over a beam, hang them upside down, and live in the winter time and shoot them with a pistol right in the lower intestines and walk off and leave them hanging there. A lot of times people ask me, they'll say, Hey, preacher, how do you stand it when people call you and cuss you out? I ain't been through nothing. We ain't had to suffer nothing like our ancestors did for the glory of God. William Tyndale was a great man. They strangled him and burned him at the stake. They took one fella down there. Boy, that old saint of God was going up there to burn at the stake. The jailer was leading him like this. And they pulled that fella up there to burn him at the stake. And uh, that jailer set him on fire. And the Christian leaned over to the jailer and said, Hey, friend. He said, You reach over here and feel my heart right now. He said, If my heart's beating any faster than yours, don't you believe my religion? <laughs> he said, if my God ain't able to take care of me, don't believe in it. That jailer reached over and felt that Christian's heart and it's just going boom, boom, boom. That jailer's heart going boom, 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 boom. Just nervous being around him. That's the people you're going to live. What if the Lord puts you right beside one of them people? And he comes over to a mansion and says, Boy, it must have been bad in the 1990s. What did you go through? And you say, tell you the truth, man, we had an air-conditioned church. I had my house full of food. You could turn the radio on anytime you wanted to and listen to preaching, and I didn't even go half the time. Is that what you're going to say? What are you going to tell these people? What are you going to tell them, man? Look what they went through. So you and me, listen, listen, me and you wouldn't even have a, me and you might not even be saved if these people hadn't have stood for God and got the truth out and got the Bible in the hands of the common people. That old boy John burned at the stake and he'd give his whole life so that the, the people could have the Bible in the common language of the people. And the last thing he said before he died was, Lord, open the king of England's eyes. And God answered that prayer. And King James, let that book be put in English. Better thank God for it. One of them come up to the, the piece of wood that they was going to tie him on burn him at the stake and kissed it and said, Welcome, cross of Christ. Welcome, everlasting life. They took one of those Christians up through there, going to burn them at the stake. And somebody said as they were walking up them steps, where they was going up there, they, they had them in chains. They had been done without food. They had been in, in torture. They had been in prison. And they were walking up through there, and they were saying, in five seconds, I'll know the answer. In five seconds, I'll know the answer. In five seconds, I'll know the answer. What they are saying is, buddy, after about that plane got a hold of them, and after they got their sword through their body, and they had see Jesus and they know the answer to every problem they've ever had down here on this earth. They roasted them like barbecue meat. When you ladies get to heaven, you'll meet a lot of women up there who the last thing they ever saw before they died was their children being drug off by a nun to a convent. 
You'll see them. You'll live beside them. Imagine, imagine uh, an interview with this lady who saw her kids eat by pigs and saw their guts torn out. Then they took some of those women who were pregnant, split their stomachs open, and let pigs eat the, ba- uh, the baby right out of them. They tied them down on the door. They put them, buried them up to here. Because of the same thing that me and you believe. Very same thing. Only way to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that woman who lost everything she had and so her kids tore up and eaten by hogs? Maybe winding up right beside Tammy Faye Baker in heaven. Here they are in heaven. Here's this woman had her pigs, had pigs eat her kids, had her husband killed. She was burned at the stake. Here comes Tammy. Oh hi! Praise the Lord! It's uh, I can't. I don't do a very good interpretation of her. My voice is too deep. Uh, it's uh, praise the Lord! It's so wonderful to see you. Oh, look at my new diamond! Oh, look at that! And the lady says, "What are you, Ronald McDonald or something? How'd you get here?" And she says, "Oh, praise the Lord! We just had this, and I had my honeymoon recently in Hawaii." And, I, and, and that woman says, "Gag, woman! Where'd you come from?" Now, I'm not putting down Tammy right now, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. There's a lot of difference in the old time Christianity and what we call Christianity today. We ain't been through nothing. We're going to live with these people forever and ever and ever and ever. People say, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm just having it so rough at home. and I don't know. You know what's wrong with people? You watch TV so much that you think normal life is riding around in Rolls Royces, partying all the time, going from one woman to the next, and one man to the next. You're brainwashed, buddy. You're brainwashed. That, that ain't never been that way till this generation that you and I are living in. We're far removed from what our ancestors went through for the glory of God. We think we're really suffering if we don't get a new dress about every few weeks. We think we're really doing without. If you say, well, I can't come every night to a revival preacher. Well, I have to get up and go to work the next morning. I've heard people say that. I've heard people say, well, I can't come to, come to church on Sunday night. I work the third shift. Lord have mercy, man. What are you going to do when they start burning us? What are you going to do if they start taking our lives? Who are you going to live with in heaven? You're going to live with a 17-year-old girl. All you teenage girls, listen to this. She's 17 years old. They told her, they said, you go to Mass and confess this is the right way to worship or we'll burn you. They said, you going to Mass? She said, no, I'm afraid I'll meet the devil there. That's right. That's what she said. Amen. But that's pretty good for a 17-year-old girl. You 17-year-old girls got that much guts? Hey, what are you, some of you don't even have enough guts to take a track to the high school. You don't even have enough. What if they put you outside that girl when you get to heaven? Did you carry your Bible? Well, no. I thought people would laugh at me. She, here's what she done. They put a statue of Mary in front of her and said, kiss it. She said, no. The flame started burning her and she said this. She said, behold, you papist. You're always looking for a miracle. I feel no, oh, no pain. This flame is a sweet bed of roses to me. And died and went on home to be with the Lord. You know who you're going to live with? You're going to live beside people like that. You know, when I studied this, well, I kind of wanted to go out and say something smart to somebody so they'd hit me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Don't you kind of feel guilty? You're going out and have a big dinner this evening, go home like a big hog and lay there two or three hours, and then mosey on back in here tonight and soak up some more blessings. <laughs> hey, man! They put them to the stake! They set them on fire! You say, well, brother, Dan, I mean, I mean, I had an I've had a knife pulled on me and I've been threatened and cussed and all of that and I've been treated bad. Man, there's a guy down the trade lot one time. I thought he was going to get me. He pulled out a knife this big. I was up on top of the van preaching down there where the trade lot used to be down there. And I was screaming. I noticed he come up. Right the van started looking at me like that. And he pulled out his, he had a big old boot and he stuck his boot up on the bumper like that. He pulled out a knife. That thing was that big. And he started doing it like this, sharpening it on his boot. 
I was kind of looking over there like that. Whoa! Repent to meet God! Repent! Get wrong right with God! Well, that sure dude, that dude fixed a bad, uh, wrong place to start sharpening a knife. And I got down and I started shaking these people's hand, you know, and I was going like this. And I stuck my hand out to shake his, and he looked at me and said, You better be glad you quit when you did. I said, <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> uh, but hey, man, that's spooky. That's spooky. I know that beer bottle throw down. I'm preaching out at Hardee's or, you know, Pizza Hut or somewhere like that. That ain't no big deal. That ain't no big deal. You know who you're going to live with? You're going to live with Raymond Law. He wanted to be a missionary to the Jews. Couldn't. The Pope said no. He's going to be a missionary to the Muslims. They wouldn't even let him in the country. He wanted to go preach to the uh, Muslims and tell them uh, that Muhammad was the wrong way. And they wouldn't let him do it. And he, he fell in love. And here's how God got all his life. He fell in love with this beautiful girl. And it was back in them days when there was romance, you know. And he'd go down there, you know, and he'd stand around. Uh, she'd be up in there, uh, the palace window there, you know. And he'd stand around down there at night and she'd come to the window and blow kisses. And she threw down a flower one time and he, and he about blew up in his side. And finally one day, finally one day she came down there to see him. And boy, he thought, oh boy, this is it. I'm going to get to talk to her for the first time ever. And she came down there and talked to him. And she went around like this and flipped her hair up like this. And he thought maybe she was going to let him kiss her on the neck. And she flipped her hair around like this. And there was a big cancer there about that big eating down into her body. And then she went back up and he knew she was dying. And he said, God, put that scripture on his heart. All flesh is grass. And the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers, the flower fadeth. He said, no matter how pretty somebody looks down here, they're dying. They're dying every day. They're dying. And he said, God got a hold of his heart and he went to, to preach to the Muslims and he got on a ship. And the first time he got on a ship, he was so scared and sick, he fainted. And had to be took back aboard. And the second time they put him back on there, he's sick. Had to be carried on board the ship. Got right out of the country, threatened and tempted. They said, if you ever come back here, we'll kill you. A few years later, he got right back on the boat, went right back into that country, went right downtown and stood up and said, Muhammad's a false prophet! Prepare to meet God! They killed him. They killed him. They stoned him to death. That's who you're going to live with. You're going to live with Savannah Rola. People like that. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You're going to live with Father Hooper. They called him Father Hooper because he just that was his nickname. He, he wasn't a priest or anything. He was loved by everybody in the town. He's a real old man with white hair and a beard. Buddy Mary had him burned at the stake. And they said one day when he was getting ready to take him up there and burn him at the stake, they said, Father Hooper, do you believe that God really delivers us when we're burned? He said, yes, sir, I do. They said, sir, will you show us if, you can't, if, if the Lord helps you through the pain, will you raise your hand? He said, I'll do it. They took him down there. They said, if you're able to stand the flames, will you hold up your hand? He said, yes, I will. They tied him up to the stake. The wood didn't burn too good. They start lit it, set it on fire. Started coming up his legs, turning them real dark red. Started coming on up and it wasn't burn good and they had to throw some pitch on it. Something to light it up again put a little gunpowder or something on it, make it spark. Water started running out of his body. And as them flames come up over that old man, body like that had been loved by all those people, had an old white beard, white hair. Flames just come up all around him. They said his head slumped over them chains like that. And when his head slipped, slipped over them chains, right, all of a sudden they thought he had died and he throwed both hands up in the air and them flames clapped them three times like that. Went on home to be the Lord. Those Christians took courage. But it encourages me to hear about somebody else being willing to stand the ultimate test. We're going to meet that guy, people. We're going to talk to him. We'll shake his hand. Father Hooper said many years ago, and I'll say this and I'm going to be through, captain of a hundred students in China when they 
in the, in the rebellion, they took these Christians out, young people. And they took a hundred of these young Christians out and they laid down a cross and lined them up and said, trample that cross and you can go pray. If you won't trample on the cross, we're going to put you to death at the firing squad. The first one came up, trampled the cross. The second one came up, trampled the cross. Seven straight, trampled the cross. This young girl came up, just a young lady, come up, looked at that cross. In her mind, she began to think about all that God had done for her. How Jesus one day died on that cross to save her soul. She knelt down before she got to the cross and asked God to give her strength. And said no. They took her out to the firing squad, put those guns at her, killed her just like that. And 92 more of them said no to and followed her example. And all them young people that said yes, Jesus, and no to this world went on home to be with the Lord. Hey, listen, when your preacher gets down on you about being faithful, come to Sunday school, and all that, you better take it with a cheerful spirit and not get too mad. You, you people getting off easy. You're getting off easy compared to what our ancestors went through. It's not very much. We're not asking a lot to sacrifice these days. Who are we going to live with in heaven? 